Georgia Bridges, hey gal, welcome to the podcast. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excited to Thank be you so virtually much for being here. here. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, how's life in the Big Apple? That's what you call it, right? Yeah, that is what some people might call it. Um, quick question: Am I allowed to curse, or are you a no cursing? Yes. No, you okay. Can. <laughs> so I call it the Big Asshole. Um, <laughs> it's very weird right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I love New York. I love New York City. I lived here last summer, so I did get to have like that New York summer experience. But now, especially with COVID and NYC being one of the OG hotspots here yeah. in the United States of America, um, it's been really weird and yeah. quiet yeah you know the city that never sleeps it's kind of sleeping Sleepin'. yeah <laughs> it was it was a little bit more lively mm -hmm. in the later summer months but now with the weather changing and all that it's just yeah pretty scary it's kind of sad <laughs> yeah it would be Ugh. yeah it's kind of like i don't know i can't imagine what it's like then like is everyone wearing masks or not wearing masks or well, the good people are wearing masks. Yeah. Um, I would say the vast majority of people are wearing masks. There'll be a couple people here and there, the anti-maskers that, you know, but you know, everyone gives them the look. Yeah. So hopefully that sinks in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today we are just going to be doing a bit of a ask a bisexual anything. Um, I opened up the channels on both my Instagram and YouTube community tab and asked people to ask us anything they want to know so obviously not just sexuality based just ask a bisexual anything in general so yeah I'm just gonna throw them out and we can discuss them and yeah, just answer them as best you can let's do it all right so I'm in high school and I came out as bisexual last year in June I have yet to date a girl but there is this lesbian girl that is older than me who is super cool and I think we both like each other, so can you kind of walk me through dating another girl for the first time? Maybe share your experiences, how to not be awkward, just anything to do with dating the same sex for the first time. Right, this is a good one, this is yeah. a good one. Um, congrats on coming out, I guess I would say, yeah, for the beginning. Okay. Um, very first time dating a girl, or dating someone of the same sex. Um, I guess this is going to sound so cliche, but what really worked out for me is to genuinely just be yourself. Yeah. Um, I feel like dating anyone for the first time is awkward Definitely. in and of itself. Yeah. But then when you enter the line of dating someone who is same sex, you don't want to come across as too friendly. Yeah. As if like you're just trying to make friends. Yeah. And so I think that's, that was the most difficult thing for me when I started pursuing um, people other than men. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, try not to be too overly platonic when you're talking. Um, you know, I, I remember being on Tinder and people or girls would message me and be like, you're so pretty and I'd be like oh thank you and it was just like it felt like I was talking to a sorority sister right like, it wasn't like flirtatious mm -hmm. so bump up that flirtation level yeah um be yourself because if you're not being yourself and you start dating someone who has started to fall for someone who is not you you're in a sticky situation yes yeah and um relationships are always awkward in the beginning yeah. that's just a part of life so i would just say communicate and be open uh and yeah yeah that's it <laughs> i feel the same actually i feel like i'm on tinder i made more girlfriends on there than guy friends because that's the thing it's so easy to fall into that like platonic side because like girls are always mm -hmm. so complimenting of each other and nice and that's so normal whereas with a guy most of the time they're like they're very straightforward with what they want and they're very flirty and stuff. Yeah. So that's really good advice. How to and where to get a chest binder. 
Ooh, I actually don't know. That's a great question. Um, definitely what I have heard of the research that I've uh, done or seen about chest binders is that you don't want to do it yourself DIY because you could really damage uh, your body. Um, I would say the internet yeah. of all places. Um, there are some great nonprofits and charities that actually raise money to donate chest binders to transgender folks who might not be able to afford them or things like that. Okay. So um, for, for those of us who are not looking for a chest binder but want to help out, I would definitely say check that out. Yeah. Um, but I know that you've just got to be able to find it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, the internet's but a great place. Be safe about it. Do good research, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, oh, this one grinds my gears so much, and I feel uh -oh. like it will with you too. <laughs> um, but does me wanting to date a straight man make me less of a bisexual woman? People seem to think so. Yep, there, the gears are being ground. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> absolutely not yeah you dating someone who identifies as straight does not make you any less of a bisexual person no. in the least it has nothing that's to do with it society yeah that's just society getting into your head or maybe even your ego with like internalized homophobia or biophobia yeah trying to tell you that you are not valid when obviously you are so unbelievably valid mm -hmm. no matter what so whoever you date does not um define no how you have defined yourself yeah it doesn't you know, change that it doesn't change it exactly yeah and i think i don't know why but that's almost ingrained into society people believe like oh like i've had people ask me that before like um, after I came out as bi and people would be like oh because like I was in a long-term relationship with a guy for six years someone I went to high school with mm -hmm. I was very public with it on the internet everyone sort of knew about it friends and family very small hometown where I come from like everyone knew everyone was always like how's Mark where's Mark blah 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 so everyone knew um, but yeah after I came out as bi and then when we separated and stuff I had people it's kind of like almost ignorant being like oh but you dated mark oh but you had a boyfriend and it's like mm -hmm. yes do you mm -hmm. understand what bisexuality is or like <laughs> yes i did but it's also possible to be bi and date like it doesn't uh it's like exactly. if i started dating a girl i'm not a lesbian i'm bisexual like exactly exactly and it's like people always say like, how do you know that you're bi if you've never been with a girl? And I'm like, oh, well, how do you know that you're straight if you've never been, been with, with either a guy or, or you know? Exactly. It's like the logic that some people come up with to try and erase bisexuality is hilarious when you actually put the logic into it. 100%. I filmed a video yesterday on biphobia, um, in, sorry, internalized nice. biphobia and bisexual yeah, erasure and everything. Oh and nice. um, I debunked some myths, and one of the myths was uh, bisexuals are transphobic. And the the reason or like core meaning or whatever behind that was, oh, like people, some people that are bi are only attracted to men and women or cisgendered men and women. And I was like, okay, <laughs> well, if we're taking that logic anyone that isn't attracted to transgender folk is transphobic like mm -hmm. it makes no sense <laughs> mm -hmm. okay the things people try and come up with i know Ugh. okay um how to deal with coming out anxiety uh for me journaling helped me beyond anything else as far as like coming out and anxiety went I think because, for me at least, when I am going through something very anxious or I am having a moment of anxiety, yeah. my thoughts just go bizarre in my head. Yeah. So for me to take a second and write everything down brings order to that scrambled ideas, mm -hmm. just throwing everywhere, trying to be like, ah, are you bisexual, are you not, yeah. are you lesbian, are you straight, what's going on? Yeah. So. 
um, for me, writing and just free flowing speaking to myself mm -hmm. is what helped me the most calm down my anxiety. Yeah. With coming out. Yep. Yeah, I I did the same. I kept a journal and I sort of just I took time to not necessarily meditate, but sort of just sit alone with my thoughts, which sounds super depressing almost, but no, not at all. Yeah, just get to the bottom of what am I actually feeling? Like, what am I actually thinking? What am I trying to um, decode here? And that sort of helped a lot too. And I guess um, just anything that you enjoy doing that you know already, like coming out anxiety is, is not too different from any other anxiety. Like it obviously has a different um, origin, but like if you're feeling anxious about school or work or friends or anything like that, do what you would normally do to um, release that anxiety like whether it's going for a walk listening to music watching something on Netflix just anything that you can sort of do to get your mind off it if that's what's causing your anxiety as well just to give you a break um, is it weird now. if one of my breasts is bigger than the other girl no or no. Person, no whoever has breasts if they're the exact same size, it'd be weird. No, okay. no almost. But, I don't know, know many people. It, almost a little. Yeah. yeah. Who have like perfectly symmetrical boobs. Yeah. Um, no, my. I always forget my my right my one's bigger. Is bigger. bigger. Yeah. Oh, we're opposites. We are. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, a hundred percent normal. Yeah. And. Um, if you want to go to the doctor to get it fixed, do it. If you don't want to, no worries. You do you. Whatever makes you happy with your body. Yeah. No. Perfect answer. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is a good one. How do I get my parents to understand that bisexuality is a real thing and to not dismiss it? I came out to them a while <laughs> back, but they are confused as to why I wouldn't just ignore that part of me. Hmm. That's a really good question. Um... I think a lot of that has to do with, for starters, your parents saying, or they're wondering why you didn't ignore that part. I think that is the generational gap that we have where our parents' generations are like told to shove things down and ignore them if they don't seem quite right with society. Um, so right off the bat, you are going to have to be dealing with a generational difference. I would say take the time to really try and educate them yeah. as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, hopefully your parents will be responsive to that. You know, just take the time. If you sit your parents down and tell them how you feel, good parents will listen. Good yeah. parents will support you no matter what. Yeah, you'll, it'll be okay with time, but you know what? Us kiddos, we gotta teach, sometimes we have to teach our parents things. Definitely. Which might seem backwards, you know, growing up, our parents are supposed to teach us how to live life. Yeah. But as we continue to grow and learn, um, yeah. it's good to share the knowledge. Yeah, it's definitely something like, my parents were, they're super progressive and they are great. Like, don't get me wrong, they're, they're perfect. But, and dad, when I came out, accepted me 100% straight away and was like, yep, you do you, very progressive, awesome. Mum, on the other hand, also progressive, wasn't negative about it or anything, but just didn't understand it. And sometimes it just mm -hmm. takes, yeah, sitting them down. Like there's a difference between coming out and saying you're bi and sitting down and being like, this is how I feel. It's not up for debate. I'm not gonna push it away. It is part of me. It's not my entire identity, but it's part of me. And yeah, I want you to understand that it isn't just something I can push away. Exactly, exactly. Is it possible to be romantically attracted only to girls, but sexually only to boys? Honestly, I don't I don't think I've ever heard of that. Me neither. Um, but then, at the same time, like, who am I to yeah. question anyone's sexuality or their preferences? Yeah. So, you know, I'm not here to say, like, oh, yeah, it's possible, or no, it's impossible. Mm. Um, I think whatever you, like need to do for your own personal like gratification sexually or romantically um you know like you do your thing yeah i'm not gonna judge you as long as you are not like um devalidating anyone else's identity yeah so uh 
do what you gotta do. Yeah. I've been identifying as a lesbian for a few months now and I'm only out to my closest friends. I feel as though I want to try she, they pronouns, but I feel a strong connection to the terms like lesbian and sapphic, but I'm afraid other uh, women loving women won't date or accept me if I also use they, them pronouns. So I guess my question is, can I use she, they pronouns and still be a lesbian? This is a great question. I've seen a lot of this discourse on Twitter lately. Yes. And one, in my personal opinion, 100%, yep. you can identify as a lesbian and use she, they pronouns or just they, them pronouns. Um, or just she, her, whatever <laughs> works for you. Yeah. Um, Non-binary lesbians are valid. Correct. Um, you are valid no matter what. I actually... Um, talked about this, I think it was in the video with my younger sibling Hope when they came out as non-binary on my channel. Yeah. Um, I forget, I, I forget where I answered this, but it was something along the lines of, like, who am I to judge your gender identity? Correct. Um, coinciding with your sexuality. As long, again, as long as, like, you are not devalidating other people. Yeah and you are validating yourself, mm -hmm. I don't see a problem with that. No. Um, there's nothing wrong with identifying as a lesbian, but also using they, them pronouns. Correct. And, and I feel that, like, um, like sexuality and gender identity are two different things. So yeah, yeah, identify how you like, and then that's not going to change who you're attracted to or you're attracted to, sorry, or your attraction to whomever. Like, yeah, identify however you like, um, and then you're, of course, valid in identifying as a lesbian. And if people have an issue with that, that's their issue, not yours. Exactly. Um, and you don't want to be with people like that. Exactly. Yeah. The um, good ones will stick around. Yes, of course they will. <laughs> this one is good. I really want to bring more awareness to this on my channel and stuff as well, but I'd like to know about your thoughts on male bisexuality. What do you make of it? Why do you think it appears less commonly than female bisexuality? What can be done to reverse the negative stigma? Oof. That is a great, great, great question. Yep. That's definitely something I want to bring more awareness to my channel as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been hard because it's not my lived experience. Yeah. But I definitely, cause, you know, I don't, I'm not the person who should be giving advice on it. But, yeah. Um, no, great topic. But um, I personally believe that male bisexuality oh, is, is... Okay. So, male bisexuality. Yes. Um, I think it's much less common than female bisexuality because of toxic masculinity. Yes. Um, especially here in the United States. Mm -hmm. I don't quite know what it's like in Australia. Never been. Hope to be one day. Um, it's very but, similar, I think. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I actually have a few guy friends that are bisexual. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, in Likewise. terms of it actually being accepted as a true sexuality and not being erased as, oh, they're just gay. Um, no, that mm -hmm. definitely happens. Um, mm -hmm. Or like even just questioning, like if a guy comes out as bi, people still, yeah, I like are they yes. sure? Are they just saying mm -hmm. that are they too scared to come out as gay? Like, why? Like mm -hmm. we women, and and I mean we get that. Like of course, anyone that comes out as bisexual gets backlash and gets the whole questions as to, oh, but you had a boyfriend. Oh, are you sure? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think women unfortunately can get away with it and have less questions than when males come out as bisexual because yeah it's the whole are they just scared to come out as gay though like, yeah yeah <sighs> yeah but i do think that all stems from toxic masculinity and how i feel like we're definitely seeing it change in our generation, but as far as gender identity and sexuality goes with men, it's like you are either straight or you are gay. gay. And it's like you are macho man straight or flamboyantly yeah. gay. Correct. So it's that, so when people are in the middle, yeah. society is like, absolutely not. No. I've never heard of that before, you know? Yes. So 
I think it a lot of it just stems from <sighs> shitty toxic masculinity that we have to keep fighting to denounce and let men and boys anyone just embrace who they are no matter what it's it's a spectrum it's a ever flowing river you know you don't have to be one or the other yep so um yep that's 100 percent true yeah. and i feel as though and and this is sad this actually really upsets me but like there are so many girls in my life that have come to me and haven't come out as anything but because of my channel and just being super open and people find it easy to talk to me a lot of the time they'll come to me and be like hey like i'm actually questioning like i think like i've always had boyfriends but i'm actually kind of like attracted to girls and that's great yeah. but i feel like boys and like obviously i have no idea but i feel like if girls can see that attraction and may even it may even develop into feelings or actually wanting to be sexual with a girl i feel like surely there are more men out there than we know that think or would want to like be with a man but would never and like again toxic masculinity but would never even admit that to themselves like there's something in the back of their head being like hey being with a guy wouldn't be so bad but then it's like society's like no 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 no, no. you're either straight or you're not exactly. so it's like and then they never discover that or explore that bad but yeah. hey good on you for bringing this awareness to your channel and yeah. i will do the same to mine yes very good <laughs> this next question is spicy so get ready um <laughs> how do sorry how does lesbian sex work yes i know they can have the same sorts of sex as straight people like in straight sex it's foreplay p and b so with lesbians what comes first and what is the main thing lesbians do typically well i'm gonna just go ahead and throw out there and say this is for all people yep. doing the sexy time yeah um so i mean what what happens first a mommy and a daddy <laughs> just kidding <laughs> a mommy and a mommy are deeply in love yeah and they start kissing no i mean these questions always like it's just like goes to show like how taboo society is talking yeah. about sex in general like i had no sex education in Not at all. any of my schooling. None. You have, I mean, I had like the puberty education in the fifth grade yeah. where, you know, you, you got a permission slip signed that you could watch a video on hair is going to grow down there. Yeah. But I, even in my health classes, never learned anything about sex. Okay. And I had to turn to porn for education because... Oh. Yeah. You know, as a kid growing up, you're like, well, what what the fuck am I supposed to do? And then we go into the topic of porn just being, having absolutely not, well, more often than not, not very realistic oh, no. situations. No, 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 no. So people just assume that lesbian sex are like, well, how does it work if there's not a penis? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's like well have you ever gone down on your girlfriend sir Please. well imagine that from another woman five times in a row no i'm kidding <laughs> um but like sex starts the way sex starts two people who have an intense attraction to one another mm -hmm. um physically or physically and emotionally yep. and they want to express that through being like physically close together without clothes on mm -hmm. <laughs> reaching an orgasm yep. so starts with foreplay whatever kind of foreplay you want you know yep. and that can turn into you know there are so many different toys nowadays that people yep. use mm -hmm. um so yep. it works the way it works and whatever you need to do to rock your socks off it it's no different to like sex is sex like whoever you're having it with i guess and as for um the main thing that sorry the main things lesbians do i feel like there is a whole stereotype associated with lesbian scissoring and stuff and it's kind of mm -hmm. like in my entire like i've slept with a few girls and i think i only scissored once like it's not <laughs> 
It's not an every time thing. Yeah, and it's also like if you think of heterosexual, like heterosexual people having sex, like they're not always going to be having penis and vagina, like anything. Obviously different people define sex as different things, but to me, sex is anything that includes you and your partner or you and another person or people being intimate. So like that is mm -hmm. oral, that is anything foreplay, like anything like that to me is sex. So there's not really such thing as lesbian sex or like gay sex or anything. Yeah. Obviously the acts may be different and with different humans, but yeah, it's sex is what you make it. And um, yeah, I guess it's different for everyone. Some things are going to work for you, some things aren't, and it's just all about communicating and yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much how it works. Good sex is all about communication. Yes, yeah. good yeah. sex is consensual and communicative. Yes, so. 100%. There you go. That's lesbian sex. Yes. From two girls who aren't lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever dated a non-binary person Slash, what is the gender neutral term for a boyfriend or girlfriend? This is great. Yeah, great question. So I've actually never dated someone who is gender unconforming or non-binary. Yeah. But I do have a little insight because my sibling is non-binary. Yes. Hope uh, uses they them pronouns. Yes. And they are dating a girl and their girlfriend. So Hope says this is my girlfriend and then their girlfriend calls Hope her significant other. Significant other, yeah. So, significant other, literally whatever Partner. the person wants. Oh, I just broke a hairband, but whatever. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, whatever yeah. that person is comfortable with is yeah. what'll work. Yeah, Hope. I've never dated a non-binary individual either, but even with girlfriends and boyfriends in the past, I've. Like, yeah, sometimes I've even introduced them as that, but a lot of the time when I'm, even when I'm speaking about my current boyfriend now, I'll say my partner. And maybe mm -hmm. that's more like moving into adulthood, maybe it's something like that, but I've always just, because what does it matter who they are or who they identify? I love them and I'm with them. So like, I yeah. think saying partner is like, who cares? Like, what is it to you? It's someone that I'm with, they're awesome. Um, exactly. It, it's a very connecting word. It is. Like two parts together, a partner. Yeah. I think it's sweet. Yeah, and if it works, works for you, it works for you. For you. Mm -hmm. Here she comes. Hey, girl. Mm. Oh, what are you so doing? <laughs> I want a doggy. Weird, but is it abnormal to still not have my period at the age of 12? All my friends have, and I feel like I'm abnormal. Also, is it weird to ask your mom for a new bra? I'm extremely awkward around my mom and need some help. So it's definitely not weird at all to not have your period at 12. I didn't get mine until I was 14 years old. I yeah. was a freshman in high school. It was my Me first too. year. Um, I was a total late bloomer, but my mom was also a late bloomer. Um, I, this is hard because I uh, am, I feel very lucky and blessed to say that I have a great relationship with my mom. Yeah. So. I, but also I feel like at that age 12 literally to 17 years old there is definitely some like uncomfortable awkwardness uh -huh. around like talking to any par parental figure about like periods and bras yeah etc etc et again because society has made us think that it's a taboo topic to yeah. talk about women's undergarments I don't know, you know what? Honey, if you need a new bra, go say that you need a new bra. Yes. Your mom will totally understand and a good mom will take you to go get a new bra. Yeah. So uh, you could also ask your mom for money and go to yeah. the mall with, with friends, friends and do it yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that lady yeah. or whoever in the shop, like they're super helpful and they can help you as well. Um, mm -hmm or your friends could even help you, like if they've gone with their parents or whatever. But yeah, it's nothing to be awkward about. Like I understand that it can be and like there's no, like I definitely had that stage where it was awkward. Like, and again, I'm very blessed as well to have a mum that 
is very understanding and easy to talk to and all of that but I still yeah there's obviously still a sense of awkwardness there because you're just you're in your awkward stage like growing going yeah <laughs> yeah it, 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 it is but yeah for sure I think it's just yeah ask for money to go shopping or even ask to go shopping with your mom you don't even have to say for what in particular and then whoa if you accidentally end up in like brows and things or something it's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh mom I could actually oh. actually yeah I wouldn't mind this <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Did you ever think you were just into girls? Good I question. Um, you did? Yeah, I had this whole stage where I... It was when I first started realising, whoa, like, I'm into females. And then it was weird because it kind of just... Like, I was just engulfed in my attraction to women and wanting to be with them and date them and stuff. And because my entire life had been so focused on men and like boyfriends and whatever I think and this is partly due to me like focusing so much on it instead of just like letting me letting myself live my life and just like let things fall into place I was constantly like okay like I need to find out what I am like I need to go and experiment and of course that's not a requirement of figuring out your sexuality at all but for me, it was like, nah, I need to go and do this. And yeah, for like a good six, eight months, it was like, girls, girls, girls. And I was like, then like when I came down from that, figured out, yep, I would date and have sex with and be with women as much as I would men. I was like, but heck, like I've just focused so much of my year on women. Do I even, am I even attracted to men anymore? And it was definitely something I went through. and. That could have so many different causes and things, but obviously now I'm with a boyfriend, happy, super duper happy mm -hmm. and like aware of that. But it definitely took some time and yeah, I definitely had a phase and like questioned myself and yuck, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think. I think, you know, I feel like when I started going through my sexuality journey, even just then, it was kind of, I don't know. I always started off pretty much like trying to figure out, am I bisexual? Because I was beyond boy crazy, like Same. you've never seen before. Same, yeah. Um, I never really actually had a boyfriend, Okay. you know? I, I was never um, official with a guy, but I, I dated. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys before I started really questioning my sexuality but then while I was questioning my sexuality I was like talking with guys and going on dates with guys and I never quite had that moment of am I even attracted to this guy so off the get-go it was like I definitely know I'm attracted to guys yeah now I'm going to explore if I am also attracted to women but then when I started dating Tori <laughs> bless you my dog just sneezed <laughs> um then when I started dating my girlfriend Tori and I've uh been with her for the past two years of course there are moments where I was like wait a minute have I ever been this happy with a guy before and I'm uh -huh. like even if I hadn't been as happy with a guy does not um devalue my attraction no. so but then again I always whenever I start questioning my sexuality I look at a picture of Harry Styles and I'm like Whew, definitely still bisexual and it's back <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we're back now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is funny this is not really a question but it's a uh, cuffed jeans or finger guns pick one <laughs> wait cuffed jeans or your finger guns <laughs> I don't, I couldn't pick, like I finger gun all the time and I cuff my jeans all the time. I don't think I ever finger gun, but then again, maybe I'm just not aware of it. <laughs> I don't think I've, to be fair, I'm like trying, I don't think I'm I've seen you do it. I'm like, is this just from TikTok, oh, TikTok. I'm trying to do something? <laughs> like, yeah, I definitely don't do this, so I'm gonna say cuff, cuff jeans. jeans. Nice. But then again, I, my legs are so long that I'm like lucky if I find a pair of jeans that go to my ankle I can't cuff my jeans otherwise it looks like I'm like preparing for a flood so <laughs> I guess I guess I can live without either yeah <laughs> is it okay to have a preference as a bisexual 
Oh yes, it is sweet thing. I personally have a preference for women. Yeah. Um, I am with my girlfriend, love my girlfriend. We've been dating for two years now, um, but that does not devalue my bisexuality at all. If, you know, Tori and I, we're gonna get married one day, but you know, in my head I could say, if I had not met Tori in a parallel yeah. universe, I don't know per se if I would date a guy again mm -hmm. um but i'm still bisexual and whether you have a preference leaning to whatever way that does not devalue your bisexuality either no i agree i agree um i am a bit weird like i i have a preference <laughs> in terms of bless you sorry <laughs> thank you i think obviously i went through that weird stage of preferring women not just being with women, period. Um, mm -hmm. But like once all of those things leveled out again, I think I'm. I have a preference for dating men. Um, I, I'll fall in love with a man or a woman equally. But I feel like just because I have dated more men and I have dated some women, I've never had a girlfriend per se, but I have gotten to know and like gone on dates and stuff with women and felt like strong feelings for women. But I just feel like I have more of a preference for um dating men but then in terms of like sexually like when i'm with a man i obviously am sexually attracted to them love having sex with them what have you but in terms of if i was single and i was on tinder i'd want to sleep with women like i'd be more inclined to have one night stands and sleep with women than men because i find sex with women when you don't know the person or even if you do sort of better than with men mm -hmm. so obviously when I'm dating mm -hmm. someone it's it's perfectly fine and everything but yeah if I was single I'd probably be more I'd prefer sleeping with women yeah um, but yeah it's totally fine and like when people are like oh what's your preference though like I think that's a bit forward when they're like oh what's your preference and yeah it's like, I don't have to give you because not all bisexuals have one um, exactly it's kind of like people wait to hear what the preference is and they're like, oh, they're just experimenting, they're really straight. Or, yes. oh, they're just experimenting, they're really gay. Yeah. You know? And it's kind of like, well... Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. How can I come out to friends without making them think you're into them? Good question. I'm just gonna say right off the bat, good friends won't think that way. I think it's not a matter of what you can do to make your friends comfortable. It's a matter of having good people surrounding you that aren't egotistical and that obsessed with themselves to think that if a f friend came out, they're like, oh, you have a crush on me, don't you? Mm. Um, so just surround yourself with good people. It's not your battle to make them comfortable. It's yes their battle to make you comfortable and helping you like percent. congrats you just came out to your friend they should be yeah they shouldn't make it about themselves it's about you yes yeah yes no good answer and like yeah it, it's also about educating people i actually never really had that mm -hmm. when i came out if i came out as i feel like the whole lesbian thing like there is that stereotype and i hate it but it's like oh like so have you liked me? Like, have you looked at me that way? Like, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's like, no. But, mm -hmm. um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, it's also about educating people that like, like it's such a huge mentality that like, if you're gay, you're into all women. And it's like, well, no, like, as a, if you're talking to someone that's heterosexual, like, okay, like are you attracted to every person of the opposite sex or whoever you're attracted yes. to? Attractive, like, n I doubt it. Like, just because exactly. I'm gay or whatever, like, doesn't mean that I'm attracted to all my girlfriends. Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry about it. Get in line, buddy. <laughs> Literally. I'm a girl and I'm 90% into boys and 10% into girls. Am I queer enough to identify as bi? Yes, sis. You know what? Yes, if we go back into my journal that I have sitting on my bedside table in the room yeah. <laughs> over, and you would open it up to 2017 and you will see an entry of me saying, I'm bisexual, 90% men, 10% girls. Love sure, that. over time that turned into 90% girls, 10% men, but that still means that throughout all the years, yeah. I'm still bisexual, Correct. no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and like, it's sad, it's so sad, and I spoke about this in my video yesterday too, but like, 
being queer enough or bi enough. Yes, if you identify, if you have any attraction to two or more, you can identify as whatever the heck you want as valid. Like there doesn't need to be a 50-50 split. There rarely is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. This is the last question, but it says, oh. as a new bi, what's the best way to make more bi slash queer friends? Good question. Very. I'm trying to think how I, I never really like, it's funny. For me, like I didn't really go out seeking queer friends. Mm -hmm. They kind of just like came to me yeah. in time and honestly, more of my already friends just coming out. As queer, it was yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I guess we're queer friends now. Yeah. <laughs> um, the internet, if you are being safe, it is a great, great, great place. Twitter. To meet and connect with, yes, Twitter. Yeah. It's a great space to find more friends in the LGBTQ community. If you are in school, mm -hmm. um, in high school, we had like LGBTQ clubs really alliance alliance um i think it like started when i was in high school but it, it's hard because i went to um in all girls catholic mm. high school that was a very conservative in cincinnati ohio so okay it was kind of like i don't really know what's going on there but in college, I went to a public university, so there was an LGBTQ center, yeah. a whole center that's just a safe space for uh, queer identifying people. Mm -hmm. So um, there are definitely resources out there. Um, take to the internet and find them. Yeah. Safely. Yeah, 100%. I think I'm the same. I didn't necessarily seek it out. I did more of a watching and resonating with other queer YouTubers. Um, but I had the same sort of question, I was like, because there wasn't really anyone queer in my circle at that time, except for one friend. So we both sort of like, yeah, made Twitter accounts. That is like the reason I made a Twitter account. Or I think maybe I had one, but I didn't know the password to it anymore. Like I just had to react to it or something because <laughs> I just hadn't used it. Um, and there are so many groups on there. I feel like Twitter is very uplifting of the LGBTQ plus community. Like there are so many groups and like, places that you'll find like I think I was put into like five or ten groups LGBT pods like they were so great and I made friends yeah. I made friends through there a lot but other than that I didn't really seek it out but yeah there's definitely places and I think even more so now like that was four years ago there is definitely way more now the internet is your best friend there'd be um what's it called like probably even reddit threads where you could find people like honestly anywhere you look yeah. even tiktok tiktok you would yes, find heaps of queer friends on tiktok like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the internet can be your best friend yeah in these kind of situations definitely definitely well, that just about wraps up our Ask a Bisexual Anything. Thank you so oh, much yeah. for being on the podcast today. You absolute gem. It's been fun. Oh, thank <laughs> you for having me. This was fun. Fun to finally get to like meet and talk in person. I know Georgia and I have kind of like been speaking about doing a collab for a while and then it was like mm -hmm. we both were super busy. Like I'd be super busy one week and then she would be and like it's it's a tough life. Like we it's hard. Like you We're always just have something so to do. We're so busy. We're business women. We are. We have stuff to do. <laughs> and um, then I was like, "Heck, why don't we kill two birds with one stone and record this for YouTube and also for the potty?" So, yes, per. perfect. Oh my god, I just did a finger gun. I saw that. So oh. I guess I do do them. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been so much fun. If you guys would like to subscribe and find Georgia on YouTube, you can. Her her username is just her name, Georgia Bridges. Um, mm -hmm. She's awesome. You should definitely subscribe. She has great, great, great content on there. And her Instagram is also at Georgia Bridges. So yeah, definitely go follow my gal. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No worries at all. Is there any parting words? Do you have anything you'd like to say to the listeners right now? Well, I end all my videos with saying be your best self. I know yep. it sounds cliche sometimes, but it has gotten me through many moments in life, especially with coming out. Yep. So, your best self. Love thanks that. Thanks for listening. Love yeah, yeah.
<laughs> Thanks so much, girl. See ya. Bye. <laughs>